Thank you. Let's uh, give Rahul another round of applause for the, for the introduction. Thank you very much. All right. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. Before we start on the topic of how to unlock your creative process, let's do a little bit of survey. Just two simple questions. First question. If you think that creativity is important, whether personally or professionally, raise your hand. Wow, about 80% there. Okay, second question. For the second question, I would like to invite all of you to stand up. Everyone, just stand up. Yep. It's a very, very quick survey. All right. Given a range, a scale between 1 to 10 on creativity level, 1 super not creative, 10 super creative, where are you on the scale? If you are 9, 10, have a seat. Okay, we have one or two. Okay. How about 7, 8? Have a seat. Okay, not bad, not bad. Oh, quite a majority actually. All right. One, two, three, four on the scale. Have a seat. Hmm, not bad. Okay, five and six on the scale. Have a seat. Not bad. All right, thank you. So we have a good range over here. Thank you for participating. All right, how to unlock your creative process? Before we dive deep into the topic itself, let's take a step back and look at why we need the creative process in the first place. I want to bring you back in the year 196, sorry, 2010, in one of my creativity workshops. One of the participants came up to me and asked me, Hazrik, we are in the creativity workshop. Creativity is supposed to be right brain, very chaotic, very messy. Why is there a need for a process? It was a genuine question. So in order to address that, I want to share a story with you. And for the story to be effective, I need your assistance. All right? What happened is, as, as I tell you the story, at the end of every sentence that I'm going to say, I need all of you collectively say yes. Ken? Ken? Yes. All right, something like that. Thank you very much. All right, let's start. Can I tell you a story? Yes. About a boy and a girl? Yes. The boy named Jack, the girl named Jill. Yes. One day Jill got kidnapped. Yes. Yes. Jack saved her. Yes. They fell in love. Yes. Got married. And then they live happily ever after. Thank you. Give yourself a round of applause for participating. All right. Now, another story, but this time around, instead of say yes, say no. All right. Can I tell you a story? Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. You see the difference? The first time wrong, when you say yes, you allow me to continue the story. But the moment you say no, you stop me from moving. And that no is an experience of us getting stuck. Have you experienced that before? Yeah? All right? You see, there is this misconception that creativity is all about the arts. Music, dance, theater, film, painting, sculpturing. But that is just one component of creativity. The fact is there is another component of creativity we can use. That is where we talk about branding, talk about solving problems especially. And the fact is, all of us are creative. That's why we are putting you on the scale 1 to 10. Everybody is on the scale. It's matter whether you are on a scale 10 or 1 or 5, that's all. The only difference sometimes when we face with a problem, some of us could answer or find ideas almost immediately, but some of us, some of us will get some time because we got stuck. And that's normal. We are we're all human after all. And that is why we need the creative process to help us find that solution. That's the reason why we need the creative process. The question is, what are the components in the creative process? All right, if you read books about creativity or creative problem solving, some would say there are three step process. Some would say there are five steps. Some would say there are seven steps. 
But as a rule of thumb, in terms of creative problem solving, there are only two components, two main components. The first stage, I call it the divergent thinking or divergent phase. At this phase, this is where we generate ideas. All right? And then after that phase, we move into the convergent stage. This is where we look for the suitable ideas. Can I repeat? Suitable ideas. Because all ideas are good. There, there is no such thing as very bad ideas. The only difference is that some ideas are suitable at a certain point of time, some ideas are suitable at another point of time. That is why the convergent is useful for you to select the most suitable idea. The thing is, you need to know which stage are you at in the creative process. Because I remember in one of my creativity workshops, I got my participants. We were at the idea generation stage. I got them to generate ideas on how to use uh, many users of drinking straws. I got them to list down the users. And after some time, a group came up to me and said, Hazri, we are not able to list down much ideas. Can you help us? I said, OK. So I went to the group. I listened to the conversation. The conversation was something like, where one person say, let's put uh, sugar in the uh, straw. Someone else will say, yeah, but they're kind of small. And when someone else say, how about we use it as a clothes hanger? Someone else would say, kind of flimsy. You see, they were actually doing some critique at the idea generation stage, which is totally wrong. You need to, have the, you need to use the correct, top, uh, correct tip or correct technique at the different stage itself. So basically, creative process, divergent, convergent. Now, we know the two stages in the creative process. The next thing we know is we need to unlock the process. How do we unlock it? We need to have that key. So what is that key? The key to unlock the creative process is to ask Questions. Simply questions. Because questions has the power to unlock your creative process. And the question is, what questions to ask? So this is where I would like to bring you back. This time around, beyond 2010, back in 1968, about this guy called Dick Fosbury. In 1968, Summer Olympics in Mexico, 21-year-old Dick Fosbury. He won the gold medal in high jump. Let's backtrack a little bit. During that time, when people were doing high jump, they were moving like hurdle. So they would run forward, they saw the bar, they jump forward. A few years earlier before that, Dick Fosbury, still in high school, he was one of those not good in high jump. So he wanted to find a way to solve that problem. How could, how could he jump over the bar? So his intention not to win. His intention was how to solve that problem. He didn't want to win, but at least he didn't want to be last. That was initial intention. So as, as, when we look into his mind, he will, he will, we, we can see his three kind of questions, three types of questions in his creative process. The first question he asked was what we call the analysis question, the why question, why the technique was ineffective, at least for him, because he couldn't jump. When, we, when he asked that question, he was listing down all the root causes, all the possibilities why things go wrong for him. That was the first step of question, analysis kind of question. And then he asked the second type of question, this is what we call the reframing question. How can he jump higher? How can he do it differently? What ways can he do differently so that he can jump higher? This is a reframing question to shift from the problem he faced to a solution-focused direction. This is the second type of question he asked. And the third question, he asked the what if kind of question. What if I jump backwards? This is a trigger question. And at that point of time, I mentioned early on, people were jumping forward to do, to do high jump, but he, he asked himself something different from the norm. He tried, he asked this question, he tried this, he 
and he could jump it. He tried again, he could jump higher, so he could practice it, he practiced it and practiced it. And in the end, on 20th October 1968, he won not only the gold medal in high jump, he broke the world record, and, and importantly, he was the inventor of this high jump method called the Fosbury flop. So that's what happened to him by unlocking his creative process. Our version of this Dick Fosbury to, to solve our problem by unlocking our creative process. Can we? The answer is yes. Just using the technique he used, and I summarize it in what we call the art of asking. A, the analysis question. This is where you find the root cause. R, reframe the question from problem to solution, and then T, trigger to find the options to find the solution. The art of asking questions. So with that, turn to your partners and tell your partner, say, art of asking questions. Go ahead. And give them a high five for listening. <laughs> All right. So ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, the next time wrong, when you face with a challenge, when you face with a problem, unlock your creative process to solve it using the art of questions. Because questions spark curiosity, curiosity creates ideas, ideas offer solutions. With that, Hazrat Ido signing off. Thank you very much.